All right, let's find the partial derivatives of f in terms of the derivatives of g and h. So if you've got f of x comma y is a function of x times a function of h, then when you take uh, d1 of f, so we're taking the derivative with respect to x, so then h of y, that's just a constant. So that stays there and you end up taking g prime of x and you just keep h of y there. And likewise, for d2 of f, you keep g of x, and then you take the derivative of h. And there you go. Well, for part b, um, if we take d1 of f, so g of x, so you've got a function of x being raised to some power. So we use the chain rule, and the first step is to bring down the exponent and multiply and, and subtract one from what you have in the exponent and then you have to by the chain rule you have to multiply by g prime of x and that's all there is to that part um, and then for d2 of f we have so, here, so g is being raised to a function of h so again, we're going to have to use the chain rule, but we start with g of x to the power of h of y times the log of g of x. Of course, you do have to be a little careful here about like, oh, you got to make sure that g of x is not negative, but we're not, we're going to sort of brush those issues under the rug um, because those problems aren't really, this problem, those details aren't really that important in this type of problem. Um, but anyways, oh, so... Um, the exponent was not just y, it's a function of y, so you have to multiply by the derivative of that. So we multiply by h prime of y, and so there's that. For c, we've got, okay, well if f is a function, if f of xy is equal to g of x, that means that f is a function only of x and not a function of y. So when you take the derivative with respect to x, then you just end up with whatever the derivative of g would be with respect to x. Um, but if you take the derivative with respect to y, then since there's no y involved here, it's zero. And then part d is just the reverse of this. Um, since it's a function only of y, taking the derivative with respect to x gives you zero, and taking the derivative with respect to y will give you g prime of y. And finally, we have, all right, so f of x, y is g of x plus y. So here, g is being, um, the thing inside of g is a function of x and y. So we have to use the chain rule. So d1 of f is going to be, well, you start with g prime and you keep x plus y. And then you have to multiply by d1 of the what's on the inside. So when you take the derivative of x plus y, you're going to end up with um, 1 plus 0, which is 1. So this is just g prime of x plus y. And likewise, when you take the derivative with respect to y, we're going to get g prime of x plus y times d2 of x plus y, which is going to be 0 plus 1, which is 1. And so we are left with just g prime of x plus y. And that finishes this exercise.